Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for the webinar today. Just before I begin and hand over to uh, my colleague Mel, um, can I just quickly do a quick sound check and see that everyone can hear me right now? If you just raise your hand, please, that would be good. Amazing. Okay. Um, just, so, just before we begin, um, I will quickly run through just a few things during the webinar just so you guys can know. Um, so we will be moderating the webinar today. So you have myself, um, you also have my colleague Mel and Harveen who will be kind of assisting you in the chat and the Q&A box throughout the webinar. And we also have Gary on hand as well who will be assisting with any queries that come in. Um, in terms of WebEx webinar, um, the platform itself. So just a bit of a heads up, if you are having connectivity issues or sound issues, um, do bear in mind that your kind of connectivity at home could be impacting that. So if you're dialing in through your computer, um, that could make a difference. Uh, so do try to call in through your phone if the sound's not clear. And also if anyone's using kind of a high bandwidth network platform at your, in your home, um, that could affect it as well. We will also be recording the session. So if you do miss out on a, a few minutes of the session or you do recap anything, we will be circulating the recording after the webinar as well and there will be a Q&A opportunity at the end of the webinar too. And in terms of actually asking questions, so you might have noticed you're all muted at the moment. Um, so if you do need to ask questions, please do use the chat box and the Q&A box on the side to ask any questions or any comments. You can also use the little speaker function that we have on the corner. Um, so if we do have any kind of close answer questions, you can use that as well and the speakers We'll get back to you. Um, apart from that, I think that's all for me. I will now hand over to Melanie. If I pass it over to you, and we will now begin the session. Thank you, Afana. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you for registering for and attending this webinar to help you move online, um, specifically created for finance and accounting instructors. Um, today on the webinar, we do have um, two great speakers from different institutions who will be running you through a little bit more information on getting you a bit more skilled and ready to move your um, teaching and your students online for next teaching period. So to introduce our speakers. So, oh, wait, Asana, are you controlling this? So I, I'm happy to if needed. Um, yeah, I think you should be able to switch. Yeah. Cool. Got it. Okay. So today we have George Hulling from Coventry University starting the presentation. Um, George is the Associate Head of the School of Economics at Coventry University. Um, previously the Undergraduate Finance Program Director and Senior Lecturer in Finance um, and also a Senior Fellow of the UK Higher Ed Academy. Um, following on from George's um, contribution we have Dr Antoinette Flynn from the University of Limerick. Um, Antoinette Flynn is um, from the Kemi Business School at the University of Limerick, lecturing first year students um, in business, approximately 600 students, so that's pretty decent cohort, um, and module part of the financial accounting exemptions linked to learning outcomes and student performance. So I'll now pass over to George to get this started. Thanks, George. Thank you, Melanie. Um, I'm not sure if I have control over the slides, Afsana. Um, um, yeah, it should just be able to, yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are um, located. Um, I, um, as, as Mel said, uh, my name is George Cellini. I'm the Associate Head of School for Student Experience at uh, Coventry University School of Economics, Finance and Accounting. Um, just to give you a bit of uh, context, I have been teaching finance since 2011, um, all sorts of modules or courses, depending on how, how you want to, to name them, um, looking at both undergraduate and postgraduate um, levels, but in particular, uh, with a focus on switching quite a lot of the teaching and learning to the online um, environment. Um, I, I am quite proud of what we managed to achieve in a specific module I have delivered. Uh, and this is a, an undergraduate final year module, so year three or level six, depending on how, how you want to look at it. Uh, it is accredited by ACCA, 
Um, and for those of you who know in accounting, ACCA are extremely strict with what happens within those modules with the assessments and so on. Um, this has actually happened for six years in a row with an average of about 340, 350 students each and every year. Um, the assessments for the module are, um, they're quite technical and they're quite applied in the sense that there's no coursework submission. Uh, we have a, a mid-semester phase test and an end-of-semester exam, um, both of which have to be sat in class, face-to-face, -face, invigilated. Uh, again, you will know ACCA are quite keen on that. Uh, one thing which has been extremely helpful, um, and, and I remember back in 2012, 2013, when I took the module, when I took it over, um, I um, I remember the the pass rate was around 65, 66 percent, um, and then the average completion used to be something like um, I don't know less than 70, 75 percent. Uh, the the marks the average marks used to be something like 48 to 53, 54 percent. I'm mentioning this this point because I want you to to have an idea of what has actually happened with within the module. So this was a module that was really struggling. It didn't have any sort of online content. It didn't have anything, any let's say more modern teaching approaches. Um, at the moment, the module is running around 97 to 98 percent completion rate. The average module mark is around 57. It's between 57 and 63 percent. Uh, it varies each and every year. Um, it really depends on the students, the background of the students, and how how experienced they are. And it might be, um, as, I, as, as I was putting the statistics together for the module, I was thinking it might be that for many academics, a mark of 57 percent might seem a bit low. But realistically, um, and in particular, what happened at Coventry, having a, an average mark of 57% for the module from around 350 students is, is quite an amazing achievement. And in particular for a module which has to be moderated by ACCA, which has to follow quite a lot of standards. So this is a person, this is at a personal context, at a personal level. This is what I have done within my module. Now I have started, um, I have started this if you like this journey of implementing online content um, a couple of years ago, as I said, six, seven years ago. And that was the moment when, and I will show you a bit later, a couple of, um, a couple of changes I have seen throughout the years. That was at the moment when nobody in the school was using online platforms. Uh, it was quite a shock, uh, but I just wanted to, so, uh, you know, if you can think about it, around six, seven years ago, we had just one module that actually introduced this, this online platforms. At this level, um, and I would say as of January 2020, so just a couple of months ago, um, we have at least one module across every stage at, at, at undergraduate level and across different sorts of programs and different sorts of courses and so on. Now, if you look, uh, if you take the, the program structure of, of Coventry, uh, you, can, you can very easily find anything between five and ten modules at any one moment in time that will have some very deep engagement with, uh, with platforms like Connect, uh, and with Connect in particular. Um, and this actually happened because throughout the, you know, throughout the last five years, um, especially when the, the, more, the student feedback that we used to get from the students studying my module within uh, at, at level three, um, we actually realized it was quite a big change for a lot of students, as I said earlier, but they were also pretty much always saying, we wanted this to happen from the very beginning. We wanted this to happen from stage one. It's a bit late now, we appreciate it, but we wanted to start from stage one. Once we started to implement that, and for around four, four and a half years, 
we actually have anything between 900 to 1,000 students each and every year within Connect. They will come from different courses, from different programs, different modules. And in terms of the assessments, and because I, I know each and every time I, I work with colleagues and academics from around the world to, to ask questions around what sort of assessments do you actually introduce? Um, I think in accounting and finance, you can pretty much name it and there will be a chance it will be in Connect and it will be, or there will be a way to design it. So if you think both formative and summative, um, and just to, just to clarify, the formative, if, if you're not used with the terminology, depending on, um, uh, on, on the country uh, you're working in, formative is the one that doesn't carry any marks, and the summative is, let's say, the official assessment, if you like. Um, so you can have both formative, summative, mid-semester, end of semester, uh, phase test, exams, multiple choice, uh, short text answer, uh, you know, all sorts of more interactive questions where they have to match all sorts of things and so on. So um, at a school level, um, and, and in particular, because I'm associate head of school, um, we, we actually try to give staff as, as huge a flexibility as possible to, to introduce as many areas as they actually wanted. Um, and and it, it looks like it's actually working really well. Um, now there have been a couple of issues that when I started um, when I started looking for a platform that would help uh, me in particular as a module leader or as course leader back then, I had a couple of problems I wanted to to sort out. The first one was student engagement throughout the semester um, in the UK and in particular at Coventry. We don't have a mark attached to the uh, to the attendance. So if students choose not to attend, then that is a personal choice. We can we, we have to accept, that's perfectly fine. Um, but obviously they don't attend, we don't know if they achieve all the, the learning outcomes. Um, <coughs> sorry, thank you, Afsana. Um, so we don't know if they if they're actually achieving all the learning outcomes. And having something like this has actually helped a lot and you'll see in a moment I'm, I'm going to show you a couple of things it has helped us with. Uh, student pass rate for both assessments. In particular where students don't have many formative assessments prior to the summative one and they don't get a chance to actually practice and practice and practice until they, they, have, they achieve a very deep learning process. Um, that that was something we were struggling with because a lot of students were seeing the assessment strategy we had. They were seeing it as okay, I'm going to have a test in week seven and I'm going to have an exam in week twelve, and that's pretty much everything. But obviously, that doesn't help at all with ensuring students learn properly. Um, students did not own their learning experience. Um, and we always had this problem where students came back to us and saying, oh, I, I, so am I going to do this lecture slides for week three? Am I going to do that seminar paper for week five or workshop paper and so on? Um, and that's a bit, of, it's not a two-way communication channel. It's not a, a two-way learning experience where you actually, and I certainly wanted to do that, I actually wanted to give uh, quite a lot of that learning ownership back to students. Um, and, and again, you will see in a moment how, that, how this platform actually helped. Uh, the student learning experience was rather flat. Um, and as I, was, as I was writing these slides, I was thinking I, I, I would like to, to clarify what flat meant for us. It was flat in the sense that um, Students would attend the lecture this week. They would attend the seminar next week. They would have the solutions. They would have all the notes. And then that process would repeat itself 11 times during a semester or a term. Um, and that's it. There, there's, act, there's actually nothing else that, uh, you know, that adds a lot of value, that makes it a bit more interactive, that makes it a bit more you know, practical, hands-on. 
yes, we used to create a lot of face tests, practice face tests in Moodle. Moodle is our VLA. Um, but students were always thinking, well, if it doesn't get any mark, I'm not going to do it. Even though we used to say, um, okay, we, you have to go through this lecture, you do some practice questions at home, then next week you go through the seminar, then this is how this lectures and seminars are connected with what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So we were trying to make it more interactive, but the VLE, the, the, the virtual learning um, platform we have, the environment we have, wasn't really helping us with that, simply because the capabilities of many, if not all the VLEs I have worked with, are really nowhere near a platform um, like Connect or some, some of the other platforms that are actually helping massively with this. And then finally, the learning experience was too dependent on lecture notes and workshop material, as I said earlier. Um, students were actually, um, how can I put this? Students were seeing lecture notes and seminar papers as the Bible of getting all the information for that specific module. And if you were going to them and saying, okay, I would like you to do this test, or I'd like you to do this assessment, I would like you to you know, read another research paper, or I would, write, I would like you to go back to the textbook and have a look at that case study that is printed in there and so on. They would probably say, yes, 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 we would do that. But when it came to the assessments and to the final assessments, their performance in those assessments actually didn't prove that they were, they were actively doing this. <clears throat> so just very quickly, uh, the features I used um, were Learn Smart and the ebook, um, and I, I'm still amazed. And I've worked in Learn Smart for many, many years now. And each and every time I go back, I learn something completely new. I'm still amazed at how it's playing with students' understanding and students' learning. It's it's a fascinating system. Uh, the assessments, formative and summative. Although I have to specify that with summative, I only used it once. But this is um, not because I don't trust or I don't like the platform. It's more the approach that the institution has. So all the summative assessments have to be on an internal system, uh, not on an external system. Uh, the data performance analysis, I'll show you a bit later. Um, some of the media provided um, a lot of the simulations. Uh, we're quite lucky in, in, in finance in the sense that we, we can use a lot of Excel simulations, in particular with forecasting, with supporting students understand what happens uh, with a specific model, if you like, when, uh, uh, when you change one tiny variable, you know, you think of Black-Scholz, for example, in options pricing, what happens when you make a fine adjustment to the interest rate, uh, what happens with the call price, what happens with the put price, and so on. Um, I haven't used lecture notes. Um, I I just had this approach pretty much each and every year to uh, to refresh and to update the lecture notes based on what happened in the in the financial markets most of the time. So I chose not to use the lecture notes, uh, but they they did provide quite a lot of good information. <coughs> uh, excuse me. So um, in terms of student engagement. Um, the, the most important thing that um, connects and learn smart with the ebook, the most important thing they helped with was to give students some ownership over their learning. Um, and you know for, for a lot of, uh, for a lot of students, um, it might be a bit daunting to, to go back to them and say, "Guess what? Now, I would like you to just have a go with the, uh, the platform. I would like you to, to go in there and have fun, let's say, um, and you know, just enjoy. It. Just just go through the questions. The platform will start learning about you. Um, it, it's quite clever because the platform learns about students' learning. It understands um, how a student, or sorry, or what a student has to read based on their weaknesses or their strengths in a, in some specific areas. Something else which has helped a lot with is to build stronger partnerships with students. Um, as soon as 
as soon as I used to give something back to them and say, I'd really appreciate it if you if you do this, you know, 20 questions in Connect. Um, as soon as students actually, it, it, it was quite interesting for me to see, and it, it's it's quite amazing, I have to say. As soon as students actually see the fact that uh, you're helping them learn a bit more and you're helping them achieve a, a deeper learning, they really, really appreciate it. And they they start to see you not just as an academic, but truly as an academic who cares about their learning and who cares about helping them achieve something better at the end of every term. Um, so that, that, that has been absolutely amazing for me. And I have seen students change their attitude completely towards the module just because of, or I would say thanks to the fact that we had the, uh, the platform included. Um, set weekly tasks. Um, I, I did tell students, they knew straight away, those tasks were absolutely optional. Um, interestingly, I would say probably about 85% of students used to do them, um, which was twice as many as we would have normally. Um, keeping students engaged during the semester is a very interesting one, and it is more applicable nowadays. Um, and just to give you some context, I think from September onwards, we're probably going to have, it won't be an exaggeration if I say around 1,200 students in Connect across all the modules and across all the courses that we have. But keeping students engaged, we see nowadays with the lockdown, with not being able to meet students face to face, with engaging with them, um, it, it is something that helps tremendously and it is something that is really helping us um, you know, keep that momentum. Students will start every term super happy, super excited, and so on. It just matters how you keep that momentum up there for the 10, 11 weeks. Uh, students learning at their own pace. This is extremely important. If you ask a, if you ask a student to complete a face test in class, and they have to complete it in 20 minutes, um, and then at the end, they don't get that much feedback because when you have 350 students, you can't give that much personal feedback it's not going to work well. Um, and having access to the formative assessments you can design uh, or you can just select if you, if you want the, the platform to select it for yourself, by all means, it can do that. Um, it, it, it is extremely helpful. And finally, um, and this is something that, uh, you know, I, I have examples each and every year, each and every year, I have alumni coming back um, saying, you remember we did that question with leasing, for example, where we have to calculate the, you know, the net present value of leasing and so on. But because I created so many examples in Connect and because they have to go through so many uh, case studies, I have a student who works for, uh, for EasyJet. And, and she came back and said, and bear in mind, this was two and a half years after she graduated with us. Um, and she came back and said, George, she came through LinkedIn and she said, George, I'm really, really appreciate, I, I really appreciate what you did with us because now when I went through the leasing contracts with the company, I can actually remember everything. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And I, and it's extremely helpful. Um, and I think that deep learning is, is helping tremendously. Performance monitoring. I know Annette will, uh, will cover a lot more around this. Um, if you're not used with statistics, um, it, it might be a bit overwhelming. It create, it, uh, the system can create a lot of information for you, and um, it will take a while to get used to it, but it's certainly a super, super helpful feature of the platform. Um, it, it can help you understand if students do not engage. It can help you understand um, if students need a bit more help in certain areas and so on. And for, for me, uh, this last bullet point, the fact that it can create a bridge between different modules, it, it was something extremely helpful because I could very easily go back to module leaders that would take students during the following term, and I could go back to them and say, look, it, it's, it really looks like these students are not attending. They, they, do not, they do not want to engage. Let's, you know, we can do something different for them. 
uh, it looks like they're struggling with the numerical parts quite consistently. We need to put something else in place. It looks like they need more the more critical analysis elements developed. So that has uh, has actually helped quite a bit. Um, so what we're actually looking at for next year, um, we we had a conversation with uh, some some fascinating colleagues from uh, I say colleagues uh, uh, some. Um, some of Mel's colleagues from McGraw Hill around a platform that has been quite recently designed, which is Head Start. It's, it's a platform that will help us create a bridge uh, for students that will join us in semester one in September, year one. Um, and because they haven't really been in, uh, in any education institution, more or less in the UK by uh, since around March time, uh, we're looking at implementing that, um, and and actually, you know, it it helps students achieve a a baseline, which is extremely helpful. Um, stage one students will actually have quite a lot of pre-arrival content, um, and we've selected specific modules in in every course that will have content delivered via Connect and Aula. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know, Aula is, is quite a new um, virtual learning environment, which is more or less like a social platform. It's uh, it's really good. Uh, we, we're actually starting everything in Aula from next year. Um, the online platform, uh, at least for the first term, there is a discussion at a, at a UK level, uh, if you look at HEA and QRA and so on. Um, that semester one will most likely be online. Cambridge has already made, made this decision, and I think many universities will, will follow. We will most likely have some face-to-face -face contact, um, but we're actually looking at which modules we have to have on a face-to-face -face basis to ensure the maximum gain for students, in addition with combining digital learning platforms, which, uh, which will definitely help. Um, but Smartbook and and all the assessments will play a a very important role for a lot of the modules. Uh, we're looking at around 1,100 to around 1,300 students that will will most likely have access to the platform. Right, that's all from me. I have seen some questions. I will uh, reply to them uh, during Antoinette's presentation. Um, Asan, I'm not sure I can. Uh, Pass the control to Antoinette. Can you help with that, please? So, yep, thank you so much, George, for those contributions. There was some really key information there to get everybody on board and ready and obviously focus on students and their transition as well. Um, so now we'll be passing over to Antoinette Flynn. Um, just reminding everybody, please keep these questions coming through in the Q&A box um, on the chat bar. Um, some really great questions coming through. If we do not get a chance to answer everyone's questions, we will reply after the webinar. So please continue to ask the questions. And over to you, Antoinette. Thanks, Mel. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? Uh, I could hear you well, Antoinette. Okay, that's yeah. great. Yes, great. I think you you you're muted now, Antoinette. Now am I okay now? Yes, you are. Yes. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. I was just thanking you, George. <laughs> you missed all of that. Um, I'm thanking you for your presentation. It's always very interesting to see how other institutions are, are managing this process of going online and we all have such common concerns and uh, uh, innovative approaches so it's great to share. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background as George did, um, my uh, area is financial accounting and corporate finance so I teach a very large undergraduate class of 600 um, and it's growing year on year uh, in, in the concert hall. So it's a little bit more of a performance as opposed to, you know, the, the normal classroom dynamic. So my concerns were when I took over this particular module to make sure that there was um, proper communication between me and the students, uh, proper opportunities for, for feedback 
and um, uh, engagement, engagement with the students um, by myself and also their engagement with the material. I um, therefore went from the very traditional one, two lectures, one tutorial a week into a more blended um, approach. Now I'll just see, can I move to the next slide? Okay. So my blended approach I was developing in-house uh, through the big blue button. Our BLE is Sulis provided by Saki. And so there are opportunities in there to create your own content. Um, but I always found that the, the content I was creating uh, wasn't um, automatically linked to the text. And I would recommend um, the text. And the text I always recommended really was Anne-Marie Ward's text, Andrew Thomas, as you can see there, the introduction to financial accounting. The opportunity arose then um, when M the McGraw-Hill uh, had a plug-in with our in-house VLE. And uh, that offered huge advantages to me because the students were going through the in-house VLE to get access to the McGraw-Hill site, Connect site. So we had we were tied into the their registration, class lists, emails, every all that connectivity that you need through the internal systems. Um, because Gary had told me that the the ninth edition was coming along, I made sure that the first time that I used Connect with uh, the blended module that I had, I made it optional. So really it was a pilot for me to see how it would work with the students. So my key goals were to increase the blended components of the module, to increase communication with the students and give them the uh, much needed feedback that they needed throughout the semester. As George mentioned, when you have large numbers, it's very, challenging, let's say, to give students feedback, and particularly for first years where they're coming from um, smaller class sizes into a, a third level institution where suddenly they, um, they're in very anonymous environments um, uh, and they may not have the confidence to ask, how am I doing? Uh, this platform, um, this Connect platform gave them that particular level of feedback. Uh, so what I did originally was I went through the text and I mapped it against the weekly lecture topics that I was running. Now, I use my own lectures um, because I had other elements uh, of the course, like um, I had a simulated set of accounts that ran from the beginning of the semester right the way through the end of the semester. It was like a, the simulation that George mentioned, uh, and we had a support system of uh, peer learners. Uh, which were students in the second, third and fourth year who would support the learning for the students. So there was the social aspect, the blended aspect uh, and the no um, all scaffolded around the normal traditional delivery. So uh, as it was a pilot, um, I, I created these optional tests. I provided an incentive, so it was um, summative, um, but it wasn't um, going to be uh, a very large stake of their grade, okay, but it did give them sufficient incentive to take the test. And then I noticed that this class, um, which assumes no knowledge, so you have uh, a core group of business students and only say about 40% of them would have accounting done at second level. Um, and we're trying to bring them up to that level in 12 weeks. So 60% of the class would never have um, engaged with this material before in any great detail. Um, we brought the average grade in the class from uh, just above a passing grade, somewhere around a C2, right the way up to um, in the first year into a B3 area. And that was a big jump. We convert our grades into numbers, um, just like the American system out of four, so four is a perfect score, two is a, a passing score. So I would be quite happy to get a score of 2.6 on average per module. So big numbers like that, that's what you get, 2.6. So when I took over this module, when it wasn't blended and it was delivered on a traditional basis, 
uh, the average score was 2.2. In the year that I, I added the, the blended and the connect in particular to the module, the, the average score went up to 2.5. And I'm just going to go to the next slide. As you can see here is an example of how I structured the connect element, which reflected the structure that I had in-house as well um, to the VEL on a week-by-week -week basis, which again scaffolds the, the learning for the students. I might come back to that in a little bit. So in the second year, we had the new text, new edition. So now I decided because it was so successful, I was going to make it mandatory. Again, it's the same authors. Um, uh, a, a better text, the older text was, was a little bit out of date. Um, again, I mapped the 12-week delivery against 12 bundles of readings, as it were. Um, I also created uh, a revision MCQs um, through Connect. Uh, I didn't add any um, incentive to those revision tests. I delivered them, I left them open, I think, in the middle of the semester and the end of the semester so that students can gauge their own level of understanding and also prepare them for the final exam or help them prepare for the final exam. And what I noticed when looking at the stats was that 95% of the class tended to complete the mandatory elements that had a grade associated with it. So if there was an incentive um, associated with the element, like the reading, there was an incentive for that, then I, I had nearly full buy-in. Uh, where there wasn't any incentive or grade incentive, just half of the students uh, engaged with the uh, tool for revision, despite the fact that I would have sold it heavily in the lectures and got the peer leaders to sell it quite heavily as well. So in the second year of using McGraw-Hill Connect, uh, for my particular module, I noticed that the gr the average grade increased again. So we're talking about moving the average grade from a 2.2 up to a 2.5 in the first year that I used it, and from a 2.5 up to a 2.7. I, I imagine that's going to be quite stable going forward because that is the average number that we, we get with these large um, modules. So I've brought it from a struggling module up to uh, a module that's holding its own. There are very many elements to the course when it was blended. As I said, there were tutorials, there were lectures, these were all face-to-face, -face. there were peer-led sessions with their own peers, and that was face-to-face. -face. And I had developed, in addition to all of this, uh, big blue button videos that concentrated on the core concepts within the, the module and they were released to coincide with the lecture material and coincide with uh, what was happening in Connect as well. So I had um, scaffolded quite, um, from my side, a complex delivery, blended delivery for the module, uh, but it seemed to be delivering for me and for the students. Um, gains in terms of higher grades and according to the statistics for Connect, um, better understanding of what's happening for the students. Now the reading, setting up the reading, I, I had support from Gary, I have to admit that. I, I um, spent time mapping the text against what I was doing and um, really mapping it uh, not just on a chapter by chapter basis, but mapping it uh, nearly page by page basis. What is useful to know, what is essential to know, what really they don't need at this level. So that was um, something that uh, I invested time and effort and it pays off later on uh, for the students. So this is an example here of a page that I would have read through. It relates to uh, a learning outcome for the students. So I would have highlighted the element that was important. The students then, when they're doing their reading assignments, those important highlighted elements pop up. 
they're asked um, questions to determine whether or not they and they understand what is being um, presented to them. And if they have a question on it, or if their understanding is a little bit weak, the uh, the system, the SmartBook system, will pick that up and ask them um, to return to the text, get them to prompt them to to read the the section again and also uh, ask them in a different way. So maybe they just pick the question up in, incorrectly. So it learns, the system learns as the student learns. And the, this, um, the, the level of understanding the system has about the individual student's ability to learn is amazing because we, we previously would have, uh, before we had this technology, we would have been um, despairing that students didn't buy textbooks and how do you expect to learn if you're not reading? Um, but not everybody learns the same way. And so this, this text uh, and the way it um, interprets how the students uh, pick up material really um, works to the advantage of the student and allows for that those different learning styles. So really what we have here are, um, because of the way I designed the, the module, I'm allowing for um, a, a generally universal design that includes multiple means of engagement, representation, and expression. Um, now, going forward uh, into the new year or into the new academic year, where those face-to-face -face elements um, may be curtailed, uh, it is a bit of a challenge across the world in higher education institutions and and uh, we have been thinking about it fairly deeply in the University of Limerick. So this is our plan for September. So we're going to start a little later in the year than we normally do to allow the um, development of the online modules and, and I think to, to create something from scratch um, and create all the assessments around it and the 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 material around it to go online you're talking of a lead in of at least 12 to 18 months to do it really well uh, we just don't have that lead in uh, we do have uh, and i'm not the only one in the university we uh, we do have a, a a strong track record of blended learning so we do have that um experience different platforms different um uses different uh, innovations across the board so now we have a shorter time frame we are coming together as an institution to share our knowledge across uh, faculties across disciplines um, our, our center for transformative learning our IT systems our um, lead faculty are all coming together to support each other in the delivery of uh, material online. So we're going to take the flipped classroom approach where we will prepare asynchronistic lecture material, um, which will have a visual element, um, an audio element, uh, will be in bite-sized chunks because um, I found certainly when I was preparing video material for students who are 18, 19, that first year cohort. After two minutes of material, they're kind of nodding off. So 50 minute lecture on video, I don't know how engaged they will be. So I'm going to break down my lectures into, uh, into bite sizes and condense down what really needs to be said. We're going to um, have a demonstration of the, the application of the concepts, a tutorial again asynchronistic and then have a synchronistic Q&A session so that interactivity will be face to face hopefully um, if we're allowed back on campus but I'm planning for it to be a web enhanced face to face in other words um, just like we're doing now where we have a, a live session where students can ask questions. Now the um, the elements that I want to include here with these systems uh, are going to be supported by Connect, okay? And the Connect element for me is going to be through the assessments. So I've got to have, um, or we all have to come up with a way to address 
uh, how we're going to go online and how we're going to assess online. So what I have um, taken from my two years experience with Connect with this large classroom is to uh, make sure that whatever I decide to do around the smart book, I should incentivize it, so related to some sort of um, summative element. Uh, that will be initially on a week to week basis, the smart book readings. And then I aim to have uh, key assessments throughout the semester. Um, and those assessments will be using uh, initially the MCQ facility in Connect, okay, to make it a little bit easier for the students to, to um, answer initially. And then as the weeks uh, go on, the assessments will be a little bit more complex. Uh, I'll be able to use the algorithmic uh, assessment tools that are available in Connect. Now, I have up to this used the smart book readings. I have used the MCQ uh, tools for assessments, but I haven't used the algorithmic um, approach yet, but my colleague uh, in management accounting has used it recently very successfully in the um, in the uh, semester just gone by online at short notice. So we've learned a lot uh, as a group, as a, um, as a faculty on how to best use this Connect. So this is my plan. Um, I will be delivering the, the material with um, or through my normal in-house BLE and then we'll have uh, Connect as the support for continued connectivity with the students um, for uh, engagement with the material for the students and also uh, for the assessment with the students. So this is um, where, for example, I might put the algorithmic questions later in the semester uh, using um, the pools of questions that can be randomized uh, for uh, the connect on the Connect page. Okay. So there's the MCQ. We'll just skip through that. So this is an example here of uh, a multiple choice question. So you can decide when you're setting up your assessments, which questions to choose, what is the level of difficulty, do you want it easy, medium, a little bit more difficult, um, look at the answers, you can allocate marks to it. So there is a bit of work, I have to say, in, in setting up the questions. You can let the computer do it itself and select it randomly, but I think it's better to, to have a more targeted approach. And students then see the continuity between what you deliver in a lecture, what they see in tutorials, and then what is assessed. So it's good to keep um, some sort of consistency throughout. So what are the benefits of SmartBook in my experience? Well, uh, the smart book turned out to be a lot cheaper. In other words, half half of the price for the students for the book, and um, there was it meant because I took it up initially on a pilot basis just to see, you know, would students be able to afford it? Uh, and as I said, most students engaged with it. It it does increase the engagement with the material very early on for the students. The targeted reading gives immediate feedback to the students to see where they um, where they're at. Uh, the obvious benefit to me is that it has a link to the in-house BLE and that again ties back to all my in-house systems. Um, the individualized learning tailored for each student. I can see when I'm looking at the statistics in the back house as it were of the um, of the system who's struggling and I can see who's doing very well and uh, I, can, I can ask the tutor or myself to contact that student and we will, uh, we will follow up or we tend to follow up. The great news is um, it's fairly accessible on tablet and laptop and now more recently on a mobile. There's a wide range of assessment tools that I've alluded to already and it gives students an opportunity to benchmark their performance in a, in a module that it can be fairly anonymous uh, very early on. And what I found is that the students tend to, when they're engaged with the problem, um, they, they tend then to have the opportunity to start a conversation with their neighbor. 
So then the, the social element of working together um, helps uh, bond the class. Uh, so I also used um, the oversight of the participa participation rates and levels of understanding. I brought that back into the classroom. I would have a slide, say, for example, the next slide I want to show you. I might have showed that slide to the students or something similar to it with regard to uh, where we're at per assessment or per reading and prompt uh, students to say use um, the revision tests and so on. So this, this is for me um, a lot of very positives uh, that can be implemented uh, into any course, um, particularly I think for accounting, there's lots of practical uh, examples. Uh, the examples, if we're doing an online test, they're pulled from a pool of tests, so nobody gets the same test. It's all randomized, and even the answers within each question are randomized in their presentation. So there, there's um, a degree of surety as an academic when you when you use this system. Uh, going forward, I already, as I said, I've already have the basis for uh, using a blended course. I have the basis for going fully online, uh, and for me. Connect fills that gap. It fills that gap around assessment. It fills the gap around engagement. And um, I'm going to have to get a little bit smarter myself with regard to using the uh, information that I have uh, around SmartBook to keep the students uh, engaged online. Um, something that I did um, on an ad hoc basis in lectures, I'll have to formalize it myself going forward uh, into the semester. So now, um, the amount of preparation with the smart book, I, it, it's actually, a, there's a lot of preparation when you um, have to create things from scratch. The beauty of the smart book is that you're drawing from pre-prepared material. Uh, you can tailor it as to your needs. You, you know, there's a, maybe a hundred questions. You only want the the ones that are, say, easy to answer in the first week. So you just filter it down to the easy questions and you select it. So there is a little bit of learning from the academic's point of view in terms of understanding the system, but it is self-explanatory um, and there is great support. So Gary has always been a, a great support for me. Um, and I know we're all under pressure uh, to, to produce something uh, for the beginning of, of September, but I feel that we don't need to have to reinvent the wheel. This is an excellent tool that is readily used uh, uh, across many higher institutions, and it just requires a little bit of effort and imagination with regard to how it might fit with your particular module. Okay, so let's continue on. There, there is an example of where you can drill down to see the outliers, who's, who's struggling, who took four, five hours, 41 minutes to get through a, a particular um, reading, and why did that happen? Okay, so I did have a student who was struggling, but that's because English was not her first language. And this is a report, a, a global report about at-risk at students. So. Um, you can see the majority of students are in a safe place. There's about 75 students that are at risk, and that's the sort of um, feedback that you can give to students and show to students, um, say, every three or four weeks, say, look, there are some of you who are, aren't engaged, the majority of the class are engaged, and that, that kind of gives them a sense of where they are in the classroom so they can benchmark their own progress, and hopefully, Students in the green area are thinking, yay, <laughs> and those in the in the red area are thinking, oh, I better pull up my socks and get something uh, done here. Okay, so we're running over time. So now I think I will uh, pause it there and, and take any questions that, and um, answers I hopefully will be able to give uh, in relation to the presentation that I've made. I think George is also going to be able to answer any questions as well. Thanks, Amelia. Perfect. Thank you so much, Antoinette. Um, we do have time for a few questions before we have to wrap up. 
Um, again, any questions that we don't get around to, we will circulate those later, so do not stress. Um, a question that came through from Alpa was, I just want to ask, what role do you see Connect playing in critical thinking? I can see its value in honing in on students' technical skills, but I'm a bit unsure of the more discursive element. So can you guys discuss what you see the role um, of Connect in that aspect? I, I can start if you don't mind, Antoinette. Okay, Georgia. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think this is a uh, this is a question I I answered on the Q and A. But um, just so so everyone is aware, for me, um, again, it, it it's quite fascinating how the system will ask the same question in five, six, seven different ways. Um, to actually be able to test if a student understands, and the example I, I, I put in there was, you know, the difference between a capital lease and an operating lease. Um, yeah, okay, students can memorize. There are seven to 10 different, to 10 different uh, differences, if, if you like, um, or between the two different contracts. You can memorize them, you have a test, you have an exam, you put them on paper, that's it. You don't achieve anything. Uh, it, it's just a memorizing test, if you like. But the fact that the, the, the platform is asking a question between the, you know, a question focusing on the differences between the two contracts and is asking it from five different case studies or three other examples and so on, and it's asking pretty much the same question, but in a completely different way. It's not just the critical thinking that students have, but it's also the applicability skills, the skills they have to apply the differences between the contracts on three different scenarios. And that for me is extremely, extremely useful. There's another thing, um, and I think uh, I, have, I have seen a couple of participants, I, I have recognized some of the participants, and we, we, we keep having this conversation. I, I like how Connect is playing with students' mind a bit. In particular, where it says, you know, it's giving you the question, and then it's asking you those four different questions. How confident are you that you know the answer to this question? I think it's in it's in Learn Smart, um, and the you know the fact that it tests your your understanding of your knowledge is absolutely is super clever. It's it's just one of those things that it for me it's extremely extremely helpful. Um, if the question was targeted more towards you know is it going to mark a critical essay on a specific topic. I, I don't find the platform extremely, extremely helpful in that area, um, simply because you always, it's subjective, you need to read it, you need to allocate different marks and so on. Um, but yeah, I think the platform is extremely useful in, with, with the critical thinking development. I would agree with George. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I think um, the fact that the the systems um, can ask a variety of questions of the student, um, it really tests the student's ability to understand uh, what has been asked. So it, it's not um, it's not a prescribed answer. This is the this is the question. This is the answer. It's it's how they understand, uh, say, a paragraph in the text. Uh, for an essay, I haven't really um, used it for that particular module because for that particular module, um, it's more about uh, learning the key concepts uh, and it's very applied. It really is very applied. So for me, the Connect works really well because it can it can examine that concept from a number of different angles for the students. The, um, I'm looking forward to getting into the algorithmic questions, which will be even a, a deeper level of application for the students, and it will make sure that um, 
there is such a variety of uh, potential questions that the, the student gets, we can ensure academic standards and quality of the online assessments for the students going forward. Great. Thank you so much for your contributions, um, George and Antoinette. It was, we had some really great insights there on how to obviously get our students in accounting and finance online. Um, so the webinar for today, we've run out of time, but again, we will circulate these questions and answers after. Um, if everybody can please keep um, uh, in contact with our presenters, so please feel free to reach out to them. Um, you have George's information to reach out and contact on this slide now, which hopefully you can all see. Um, and also internet contact details right there. Can we see those? I'm getting a shaking of the head from George. Um, okay. I switched. I switched them now. I, okay. I think oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. um, so everybody, and these slides will be circulated later, so you guys can jump on and grab everything that you need from these slides. Um, and also, if you want to speak to a um, academic consultant from McGraw Hill to get you set up with Connect, please reach out on the link on this slide as well. Um, we will be posting a lot more information about future webinars on our social, which is the next slide, which I don't know if I can get to. Um, so please follow us on LinkedIn and have a look at our post of future webinars, as well as Twitter and Facebook as well. Please, please feel free to reach out to the marketing team if you have any other questions relating to any future resources or activities. Um, and also, if you have any colleagues that may be interested in our next webinar, we are running a marketing management webinar at 2 p.m. tomorrow. And Ms. Sana should be dropping that link into the chat box now. Um, and yeah, please stay tuned and continue to send through any questions to any of these speakers, to um, the Connect team or to myself and marketing as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to the speakers and to all of our moderators for helping with this webinar. And have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Melanie. Thanks, George. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.